the fundamental representative geometry of the quasi-crystalline spin network is a group of 20 tetrahedra. So to think about this, we can start with the E8 crystal. The E8 crystal can be thought of as the maximum density packing of eight-dimensional spheres. In the same way we would stack oranges in the supermarket is the maximum density that we can pack those spheres. So we take this very special lattice in eight dimensions and we take a slice of it and we project it to four dimensions where we get a quasi-crystal that is made entirely of regular 3D tetrahedra. But each tetrahedron lives in a different three-dimensional space next to its neighbor in the same way that the different faces of a cube live in different two-dimensional spaces from the other faces of the cube. So around any one point in this four-dimensional quasi-crystal that comes from E8, there are 20 of these regular 3D tetrahedra. And their convex hull that would encapsulate them is a regular three-dimensional icosahedron. So it's an icosahedron segmented by 20 regular tetrahedra. But in three dimensions, we have the quasi-crystalline spin network. What's interesting is that in three dimensions, these regular tetrahedra cannot close up. So in 4D, we can take 20 of them and they all kiss faces and they share vertices and they share edges. So around every edge in this four-dimensional space, there are five regular tetrahedra. And around every point or vertex, there are 20 regular tetrahedra. And in 3D, this is not the case. When you keep all 20 in 3D, and each of the 20 tetrahedra have their center vertex coincident or shared with the 19 others, there's gaps that open up. And if you evenly distribute those gaps so that you space these 20 tetrahedra around the shared point at the center, you'll have these 30 gaps between the faces of the tetrahedra. Each tetrahedron has four different planes, four different equilateral triangle faces. So when you take 20 tetrahedra, then you have a total of 80 of these two-dimensional faces. Now, normally when you have them evenly spaced in this 20 group with the gaps, you would have 40 parallel classes of these triangular faces, and they do not touch. So if you want them to touch, you rotate the faces of the tetrahedra, which rotates each entire tetrahedron, by a special golden ratio angle, which comes ultimately from the four-dimensional space of this four-dimensional quasi-crystal. And when you do that rotation, you have to make a choice of right or left. So you have to rotate them all right or all left or they'll crash. So let's say you rotate all of them right by this golden ratio angle. What happens is all the faces then kiss and they splay or separate, but they kiss. And what happens is these 40 plane classes collapse to only 10 plane classes. This is important for the physics that we use because we follow Minkowski's theorem where what is important is the number of ratios in, in a network of objects and the number of parallel line classes. And so here we collapse to the minimum possible in this configuration and where the edges cross on this group of 20 tetrahedra, it divides the edge of a tetrahedron into the golden ratio. And if you were to rotate it the opposite direction, it would divide each edge into the golden ratio on the other side of the edge. So the edge crossing points of this 20 group where the edge is divided at the golden ratio, form the 30 vertexes of a special Archimedean solid called the icosododecahedron, which has icosahedral symmetry. And so the representative polytope of the quasi-crystalline spin network is the icosododecahedron in this sense.